Yesterday I found out you can animate Spritesheet with just CSS, no JavaScript needed. I will share that simple technique with you in this video. We will learn how to take any sprite sheet you find online and convert it into a CSS animation for your website in a few quick steps. A sprite sheet is a series of images, usually animation frames, combined into a larger image. You can animate it by showing that one large image over and over, one part at a time. There are many good sites online with free-to-use sprite sheets. I used a couple for testing. We will leave some links in the video description if you want to make your own experiments. If you know any good sites with sprite sheets, let me know, please. I will show you the entire process from finding a nice sprite sheet online to rigging it and writing custom CSS to make it move. If you do quick code pen search for sprite animation, you can find some interesting examples. This is the most basic implementation. Look how little CSS is needed to make this work. You can also make it look completely 3D. This is just a series of flat images, but look at that. Mickey looks even better now. Wow, smooth animation. And the famous running cut sprite sheet. <laughs> what did they use here? They used some SAS, so it means all of this can be done with pure CSS as well. What's going on with this one? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> He's following the mouse. Can you imagine putting this on the header of your coding portfolio website? This must be using JavaScript. Oh yeah, but just this much. Very simple effect to achieve, love it. Don't forget to subscribe, like and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when I release a new video. Let's start. First, we have to find a nice sprite sheet online to animate. People on Twitter suggested many sites for me. This is one of the bigger ones, opengameart.org. If you click browse and 2D art and search for sprite sheet, you'll get all kinds of different sprites to play with. This is where I found the raven from the beginning of the video. I will leave a link in the video description. I also discovered this artist. Check out their website. No idea how to pronounce it. <laughs> they offer really nice sprite sheets, very cheap. I will buy some to use for my personal projects. There's also a free section, which is what we will use for this tutorial, so that everyone who's watching this video can code along and get the same result. What do I like? The dog, yeah. <laughs> We're doing the dog. Here I just click the download link. This takes me to the next page. And here I click download again. Windows have RAR opener app to deal with this. Also WinRAR is famous RAR unpacker. Not sure what app opens this type of archive on Mac. There must be many. I've unzipped and downloaded file. And we have two folders here. One contains sprites for jump animation and other contains sprites for run animation. Let's do run. There are many free tools to make series of images into a sprite sheet and rig it. I will use this site called Free Sprite Sheet Packer, link in the video description. It's very easy. As I said, sprite sheet is one big image that contains all the frames. So this is what this site does. It takes all the small images and creates one big image with all frames combined. I highlight all our frames. I also need to clear the old sprites by pressing the clear button here. And I just drag them over. That's it. You can click on individual images to check if they are sequenced all right. I noticed this particular website does alphabetical sequence, not numerical. So if you try a different sprite sheet and it's not in correct order, that's why. It converts numbers into strings for some reason. We have some settings here. We can choose vertical. Compact. Compact. 
or horizontal output image. Let's keep it simple and do horizontal. I click .png button to download complete sprite sheet and that's it. We found a sprite sheet online and we rigged it. Now we just need to animate it with few lines of CSS. I'll name the sprite sheet dog and it's a PNG file so in CSS we will reference doc.png. I create a new folder called Sprite Animation and open it in my code editor. I create index.html file and style CSS file. In index.html I start with basic markup. Main container will be a diff with a class of moon. This will contain paragraph tag with a class of loadin and text loadin in capital letters. Then I create a span with a class of left that contains two left square brackets. An input with a class of left and type radio. Another span with a class of right and two right square brackets inside. And another input with a class of right and type radio. These will be our controls. The order of these elements is important. Now I will create a diff with a class of dog. If we want to use these input radio buttons to control dog diff element using just CSS without using any JavaScript at all, all these elements need to be on the same level in HTML markup, so called siblings. And the dog diff element needs to come after all the input elements. I will explain why when we write CSS. It's just one line of code, don't worry. <laughs> I will put our doc.png file, our sprite sheet, inside the same folder so we can reference it with CSS. In style CSS, let's style the moon first. I give it position absolute, width and height will be 250 pixels, border 1 pixel solid black with opacity 0.3. I'm using RGBA color declaration here so I can declare both color and opacity on one line. Border radius 50% will convert square into a circle. It's an absolutely positioned element so I can center it using the usual absolute positioning trick Top 40%, left 50%, transform translate, minus 50%, minus 50%. I did top 40% instead of 50 to create some space under the circle to place our loading paragraph. Background color will be D8, D8, D8. It's a moon after all. <laughs> Box shadow will be 15 pixels, 15 pixels, with 10 pixel blur and color 999. Look at the shadow now and look at what happens if I type keyword inset here. Makes it look a little bit like a sphere now. Simple trick. Now let's style our diff with a class of dog. I give it position absolute, top 40%, left 50%, Background will use keyword transparent and URL will hold path to our image in brackets. So I named it dog.png. Position will be at 0, 0 and no repeat. Width of the element will be 200... Uh, wait. I need to check the file as this depends on the sprite sheet. If I hover over the sprite sheet, you can see the dimensions are 6342 pixels wide and 205 pixels tall. So width and height will be 205 pixels, 
Transform translate minus 50% minus 50% decenterate. And now I can see the height is correct, but width of the image element is wrong. It's cutting out part of the dog. Again, I go to the sprite sheet and I see it's 6342 pixels wide. Now I need to count the frames. I can count in the actual sprite sheet or I can go to the original folder and I see images start at 0 and end at 20, so we have 21 frames. Now I need a calculator. Six thousand four hundred and thirty two divided by twenty one, and that's the width of each frame. So, width of diff with a class of dog will be three hundred and two pixels. We only ever wanted to show one frame of our sprite sheet at a time. I give it some margin to EM Auto, and animation will be called Run. One second long and repeat infinitely. Before we animate it, let's style the rest. Paragraph element with a class of loading will have width of 100%, height 10 pixels, font family monospace, position absolute, left zero, Bottom minus 50 pixels will pull it 50 pixels below its parent container. Color 4C, 4C, 4C. Font size 20 pixels. Text shadow 1 pixel, 1 pixel, 1 pixel, 737373. 7, 3, 7, 3. And text align will be center. Now we have two input radio buttons. As you can see, I can check both, but what I want is that when I click one, the other gets unchecked. I can make them part of the same radio group by giving them the same name property. So name direction and name direction on the other one as well. Now when I check one, the other one gets unchecked. Let's start with shared styles. For input left, input right, span left, and span right. Position absolute, width and height 20 pixels. Cursor pointer will indicate to user these are clickable elements. Z index 20 will make sure these elements are always on top and can be interacted with. For span left and span right, I will set pointer events to none, as they will be covering the radio buttons we need to click. I want the spans with arrows to be visible, but when user clicks them, they actually click the radio button that's hidden underneath. Pointer events none means element cannot be interacted with. I also give them color 4C, 4C, 4C. Font size 20 pixels. And text shadow 1 pixel, 1 pixel, 1 pixel, 737373. Now for input left and span left, we position them 0 pixels from the left edge of their parent element. Input right and span right will be 0 pixels from the right edge. Input left and input right will be hidden by giving them opacity 0. They are covered by span elements that contain arrows, so when user clicks arrow, they are actually clicking invisible radio buttons. Now I can set a rule. When left radio button is checked, I use the little squiggly line selector called adjacent sibling combinator and target diff with a class of dog. This will only work if radio button and dog are sibling elements, meaning they are on the same level in HTML markup. Also, dog needs to come after the input radio button. So when left radio is checked, we will add value to our transform property. 
It's already set to translate minus 50%, minus 50%. So we need to keep that and we add rotate Y 180 degrees. This will just flip the dock to face the other side. See these elements are on the same level and dock comes after input. Now when I click the left arrow, dock will turn to the left. Simple trick and we use just CSS, no JavaScript needed. To animate our sprite sheet, I declare keyframes. Not sure if you know, but I can just declare the final breakpoint like this. Since sprite sheet is a background image, I can say at 100% background position will be this. First number stands for position on the x-axis, second number is position on the y-axis. I check the sprite sheet and I can see it's 6342 pixels wide, so x will be minus 6342 pixels and y will be 0. Almost there. <laughs> CSS animation property has optional step attribute we can add. This will break animation into steps specified by the number passed to this attribute. So this is what happens if I pass it 10. Fifteen, I check and I see this particular sprite sheet is made out of 21 frames, so I give our animation 21 steps. And I remove this bracket to fix position of loading paragraph. This bracket is a typo. This effect is quite lightweight, depending on what sprite sheet is used, of course. I'm thinking this would make nice animated logo or interactive menu element. Maybe next time. Check out my other creative coding videos and don't forget to press like if you had fun coding with me today. See you next time.